Okay, I just gave like an entire Lowe's haul and I didn't have my microphone on. So we're gonna do it again, but in hyper speed. So first of all, I got a new piece of trim because I'm putting trim on the island. So this is going to be painted the same color, uh, just as the island, the pashmina. And then I mentioned that I wanted to find just a small piece of trim to cover up the top seam on the beadboard backsplash. So I found this half round trim and I think it's really cute, it's really subtle and it's going to be exactly what I need. I got two new doorknobs in matte black, new hinges, and then I got some items for the windowsill extension. So I don't know if I've mentioned this, but my windowsill is like this big and I'm a plant person and I have never been able to put plants on my windowsills in this house, which is just so annoying. So I might do this to all of the windows, but we'll see. I'm gonna see how easy it is to do these. I got some oak wood to do it, but I'm actually gonna return that because I'm just gonna be painting it white to match the rest of the window casing. At first, when I was devising up this plan, I thought that I wanted to maybe stain the wood to just have a, a nice warm element in the kitchen, but then I got really stressed out about stains and I just don't wanna go through the process of buying like six different stains to see what I like the most. As I said in part one, I don't like to put a lot of thought in the colors that I choose. So if I can just paint like a common board white to match the rest of the window, I'm happy. That's totally fine. Now I'm gonna go outside and I'm going to paint these pieces of trim. And while they are drying, I'm going to come in and I'm going to prime these two doors here. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to paint them pashmina because I just, I like a theme. <laughs> and I think it'll look really pretty having the cabinets and these doors pashmina while the walls are white. Anyway, let's go outside and let's do a little bit of painting. Hello, good morning. Today is trim install day. So I'm gonna go bring out the miter saw onto my table in the backyard so that I can make the cuts in an open environment. After I have all the trim installed, we're gonna paint these doors. And just seeing them in the primed color has brightened up the space so much, but it has also solidified that I am going to paint them pashmina because it's just too white. I need a little bit of variance here. It's a beautiful sunny day. I'm really excited. I just honestly feel proud of myself <laughs> that I've done this and that I've done this relatively quickly. Like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with me and doing projects, but I get distracted and I take months to do anything. And granted, we did start this, I think in early February or January and it's now March, but this was a lot and I have a baby. <laughs> So I'm proud of myself that we're doing this. I did it wrong. Also the thickness of the wood on the two baseboards is different. So I feel like it's gonna look a little bit botched in the corner. I don't know if there's much that I can do about that. <sighs> Attempt number two. How can I be so inaccurate? <laughs> like what? We're gonna botch this together, all right? One of those do as I uh, do as I say, not as I do moments. This is wildly incorrect. Okay, 
the doors are painted. Let me step back so that you can see. It's not that I don't like it, but I just, I don't know, it's so different. Like it's probably the first thing I've done in this whole project where I've been like, eh, was that the right choice? But it's, what's done is done. And I think what's tripping me up is the primer went on very thick and there's like lots of texture that otherwise wasn't there with the plain wood doors and I think that's what's throwing me off but I don't think it looks bad it's just different and as I'm looking at this one that is basically dry I like it I think also the way that the paint dries it like looks like three different colors as it's drying and so that is just throwing me off but anyway I really want to get this windowsill up and this new trim up so I'm gonna put the trim up first because once I put the window up, it'll be hard to access this. So at the end, there is literally a piece like probably this big that I needed. I am nervous to nail this in because I think it's gonna split it. So I'm just gonna glue it on with the liquid nails. Before I install the windowsill, I'm going to have to cut out a little section here for the faucet in the wood. So I think the easiest thing to do will just to be bringing in the wood and then like kind of leaning it on this and then double checking with actual measurements. All right, here we go. I'm gonna first clean off the sill, make sure there's no debris that would interact with the glue. I sanded down the edge of this little cutout that I made, just a little bit with like my hand sander. And I think that looks really good. Liquid nails, I'm kind of nervous. Da -da -da. I bust the window out your car. nails go I would lose my head if it wasn't a okay I was told to apply this liquid nails in a zigzag motion I don't know why but I listen to instructions <laughs> up this project and I feel very ready to wrap it up I'm so tired I was just sitting on the couch I was ordering my groceries because I'm trying to do multiple things at once so I'm going to pick up some paint today and then about my groceries but basically I just have to do a couple of touch-ups really as far as the paint goes and I don't think that you'd be able to see that in the final shots <laughs> So I might just do that on my own, but I was just laying on the couch and it took me a lot to get up because I've just really run myself ragged with this project, but it's been so fun. I have genuinely enjoyed every bit of it. Um, I received a bunch of materials yesterday for the last couple of projects, namely this beautiful light fixture that I'm going to put over the sink. It's just a beautiful like glass, like amber glass piece. And I think that it is just going to be so perfect. It's the perfect size. I didn't really look at the measurements of how big it was when I was ordering it. So I was just kind of hoping that it would be the right size. So I need to do a little bit of electrical wiring, which I have never done before, but I have watched my husband do plenty of times. And what I need to do, we have a recess light above the sink. I saw online that you can change out a recess light for a pendant light here with a kit like this. This is a recess light converter. This is the recess light in question. First, make sure that you turn off the breaker. So I'm gonna turn this light on so that I know that it's off when I turn off the breaker. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a 10 year old video on YouTube here. Oh, it's actually the exact video or the exact product that I have. Amazing. Oh 
shoot. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped it. You want to install the green ground wire at the edge of the can. The edge of what? And you want to feed the wires through the center of the plate. So I did the red with the black, blue is gonna go with the white, I'm twisting. Oh shoot! Ah! Forgot about my medallion! No. Okay, all right, that's fine, we just undo. Well, my light is not centered in the pendant at all. Ah. That really was not so bad. This sticker is not it. Oh, my phone's telling me to pump. Snooze, hold on a second. Ooh, it's very tiny. Here's the true test, I'm gonna go turn the breaker on. Wow, that is nice. Put electrician on my resume. Okay, it also has a little dial where you can turn it off from here, but this plug or this light is controlled by a light switch, which I will be using the light switch. I want to discuss the curtains. And a thought has just occurred to me that the curtains are kind of a fun opportunity to bring some color, whimsy, just something because the space is very monochromatic and I'd like to add pops of color through decor and stuff like that. And currently they are just these canvas white curtains and I they used to be really long curtains but then I repurposed them and I hemmed them to be the short curtains. You know, long story short, curtains is like one of my least favorite things to make because it's just so boring. <laughs> but they're very easy, it's just a rectangle. So I'm gonna look at my sewing fabric stash and see if I have anything. Well, right off the bat, I have this green linen but i really wanted to use this for clothes but maybe i could use that i've got this fabric but this isn't exactly what i was going for i was hoping for more flowery this is definitely just like greenery like ooh, wait a minute i think this is exactly what i was hoping for like something like this i saw this and then right underneath it was this and i think I'm gonna go put it up to the window and see. Oh, okay, that just gave me butterflies. I feel like this is the right choice. The only thing is, I'm a little bit concerned about them just not being long enough. I mean, okay, I think, hold on, hold on, hold on. That is the entire piece of fabric spread out. So you can see it's like a little bit more than the actual width of the window. And this is a huge window, so it's a lot of fabric that is easily like a dress and <laughs> a, a shirt. Um, okay, I think lengthwise, because I, I want it to hit like just above like this, but I just think that this color looks so good with the cabinets, with the wall color, with the sconce or pendant. I just, I think this is it. This is the one. You know, this is just reminding me that I was dreading hemming those white curtains for months. <laughs> like I did not want to do it and I could not be more excited to make these sweet curtains right now. So I think that that is just my sign that the white ones were just not it and I needed to add more whimsy because this is truly really fun and I think this adds exactly what I wanted. So let's get out my sewing machine. Oh my gosh. Eee! <laughs> this is actually going to be a lot easier than I had originally planned or thought in my head because I just need to make two big curtains whereas what I had was four small curtains. All I have to do is just cut it in half and then hem the two rectangles. And that is it.
Okay, I've got my two pieces. I'm going to iron a rolled hem on both sides here. And then I'm going to put it up and see where I need to hem the bottom, if at all. So last night was a late night for me. The curtains are finished and it's now time to clip them up. And I am so excited about this. I kind of put them up as a test to see what they would look like um, with the way that I'm like pleating them. And I wish so badly that I had double the fabric. Like if I just had one more piece of fabric the exact same size, oh my gosh, this would look so good because my window is huge. Like I really commend the person who put together this house because they went big with the windows and for good reason because, bless you, we're completely surrounded by woods. So like naturally you'd want to see it. Anyway, it makes it difficult when it comes to window coverings because it is just so big. It's like a, it's like an eight foot window. I was thinking initially I wanted to do like a pinch situation like this and pin that so that it would kind of look like that in the front. But I didn't like the way that that looked, um, especially with this clip. I think that would look better if I was to like sew through, <laughs> if I was to like sew through this and like create like an actual pleat and then do that. And I just don't want to do that because then it forces the curtain to also be a lot shorter or I don't know, I guess not as covering as much window. And these curtains do serve a pretty functional purpose and if I had a lot more of this fabric maybe I would do it that way but anyway because the curtains need to be closed almost on a daily basis I've taken to this method I saw online where I hope you guys don't mind the baby babbling um, anyway you fold the fabric back and forth just like this all the way through to the end of the fabric and then you put a clip on every single individual fold so each individual piece of fabric gets a clip so i need to figure out a way to make it so that there's only 14 of them while also having both of the ends end up facing the back quite the feat if you ask me Curtains are hung. When they're spread out a little bit, it fills up the space a little bit more. I wish that I had one more for either side because that would just be so cute. But um, bottom line is it does the job. During the nighttime when I wanna close them, I can pull them all both closed and it'll close the window. And during the day, we can enjoy these cute little floral ruffles. Oh my gosh, they're the perfect length too. I love it. This next DIY doesn't really feel like much of a DIY, but I found these really cute frames on Amazon and I wanted to maybe get some rub and buff to add to just the details to make them look a little bit more, I don't know, like to add a little bit more depth. But generally, I think they're so cute. They're all different shapes. My plan is to print out some pictures and put them in here, like of Nora, of us, just like as a family. And yeah, I'm really excited. By the way, these are gonna go on the refrigerator <laughs> because our refrigerator is kind of the big white elephant in the room. Like 
we have replaced our appliances as they've broken and our refrigerator just has not broken yet and if you haven't checked recently refrigerators are just extremely expensive and we just haven't been able to personally justify it yet so with that being said I'm just trying to find ways to make it look not so white refrigerator in my beautiful kitchen which is fine like it's fine this is normal we are a normal family this is a normal house it's totally fine to have a white fridge I want to normalize the white fridge if anything okay <laughs> I got this roll of magnetic strip and it has just like adhesive tape and you just cut off a piece put it on here I'm just going to lay it on here and figure out how big I need to make the pieces and I don't really know if this will be easy to cut oh it's easy to cut regular kitchen scissors will do the trick and then I'm just gonna stick it on like this I'm going to do the top and the bottom just for extra magnetizing so that you know if we close the fridge quickly it doesn't blow off of this video I'm so excited that we have finished this project and I honestly am just so proud of myself for doing this mostly by myself and with the help of you guys along the way helping me pick out fixtures and just all of the encouragement as I have <laughs> gone through this project the last couple of months. I always try to put out achievable makeovers and things that you could actually do. So if you're interested in more sort of achievable and not a huge budget makeovers, you should totally check out my patio makeover, especially because it's almost patio season. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.